See those weeds? How nasty they look. Can I just say that that's driving me absolutely nuts? But it's got to be damn near 30 degrees out right now, and I am so not handling that today. Hi. <laughs> <clears throat> so I just wanted to pop in and make a quick video before I go in and clean the house and stuff. Um, I realized that my last video I was talking about Peter Mon a lot. But can I just say that this morning I watched, um, I think it was his May 18th vlog. And the stuff that he was talking about really touched me. It's a lot of stuff that I've been working on myself the last um, five or six years. Um, he was talking about trying to get healthy and or healthier and you know the the backlash that you get you know privately and and online if you if you talk about your stuff on your private stuff online um, and I really admired his courage for speaking so openly on how you know he he felt about talking about health changes and stuff online and um, you know that it's something that he's himself has been kind of working on I guess for um, for a while and uh, I really appreciated that you know um, as a as a 44 year old woman um, I have been struggling with my own sort of thoughts about my body and <clears throat> whatever you know You know, I'm nowhere near in the shape that I was, of course, when I was, you know, in high school or even in my 20s. I mean, I had my first baby when I was 22, 23, somewhere in there. Um, and though with that pregnancy after I had my first boy... Um, it felt like I bounced back pretty quick. I, I think I was actually thinner than I was before I had him. Um, but I think we tend to equate being thin to being healthy, which is not always the case, right? And, and this has nothing to do with anything Peter Mon said, but I think... Uh, Although, I, I have to give him a shout out because he, he did get me kind of thinking about it and is somewhat the inspiration for this video today. Um, but I, I, I think we tend to equate thinness with healthiness and that's just not the case, right? Um, I mean, I was, in, I was in my early 30s when I had my second boy and... Um, after I had him, I went through, I went through a lot of postpartum, uh, issues and, um, you know, it was either shortly before or shortly after I had my second, my mom had been diagnosed with throat cancer and so we were dealing with that and my relationship with my second boy's father was really rocky and I was starting to feel really burnt out at work and it just felt like a lot all at once right and uh, you know, I was super frustrated and upset that I wasn't able to, to breastfeed my second and that made me feel really defeated and, you know, my, my head goes to bad places whenever 
I get stressed and whatever and so you know you start telling yourself you're a bad you're a bad mom and you can't even feed your kid and all this other stuff going on and you know but anyways um, I had lost an obscene amount of weight and you know as the one being in the thick of it I honestly had no idea um, until I went into work and got a haircut um, you know I managed to get a, a day with neither of my kids and just thought you know what I'm going for a haircut talk to my girls at work and just you know take an hour or so and I walked into work and you know everybody said hi and whatever good to see you I missed you how you been how are the kids la 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 and somebody said to me you are so thin and it, you know my response was and I think most people's response when they hear that is you know um, thank you And as I was sitting getting my hair cut and, you know, talking to the, talking to the girls and whatever, I was thinking in my head, I remember very clearly thinking in my head, like, I was wearing clothes from pre-pregnancy that, I mean, I, I had to pull them up and fold them over at the waist so that they weren't falling off my ass. And I thought, damn, you know, because back then, before I had, before my, my second pregnancy, I was in like a size nine. Like that's small. Um, you know, I, I'm roughly, Five three, I think I'm slightly under five three, and like I said, I was in my early thirties at the time. So I started thinking, you know, like, damn, like that's that's not good. Like this, this isn't good. Why are people telling me that? You know, oh, you're so thin, you look so good, la la la. And it was something I became extremely self-conscious about, you know, and started thinking, you know, like, as, as time went on, you know, a few months passed and well, about a year passed and, you know, of course my mom had to have major surgery. She had stage four throat cancer. And, you know, she had to have major, major surgery. And then, of course, you know, the radiation, the chemo, all that stuff. And, you know, my relationship with my second boy's father had also fallen apart. And he was in the process of moving out and... <clears throat> things had become way too stressful at work. I was breaking down all the time. I was losing my patience. Um, I can remember the day before I sat down and, and spoke to my, my boss about leaving. Um, I was cutting somebody's hair and she's a younger girl. And you know, she was just, just being a younger girl, she wasn't doing or saying anything wrong. But what I heard in the headspace that I was in was, you know, poor me, my life is so hard. I live with my parents. I don't pay no bills. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. And I remember very clearly in my head seeing myself hurting this girl and it was so vivid again in my head 
that I actually had to put my, my scissors and stuff down, my combs, and excuse myself for a second and go into the bathroom and, and put some cold water on my face. And I actually went and asked one of the other girls to go finish her haircut or whatever it was I was doing with her because I was terrified of where my head was going. It, it, it was the scariest thing that honestly that's ever happened to me. And I came in the next day to work and, and I sat my boss down privately and said, you know, like, this is what's going on and, and I cannot, I cannot, like I'm dangerous. I gotta, I gotta go. <laughs> so I left work, but you know, all these things were happening. My head was crazy. My, my, my emotions were nuts. and. I was under so much stress and everybody's telling me how thin I am and all that. And I'm like, do I really have to self-destruct to have people comment on and then and, and to tell me, you know, that I look good or whatever? Like, are you, are you fucking crazy? <laughs> like, <laughs> and of course, nobody knew. Nobody knew what was going on in my private life or what was going on in my head or whatever. It was nobody's fault. Nobody was necessarily doing anything wrong, but it's like, you know, they think they're complimenting and, and it's, it's the, the best of intention and it's, you know, said with nothing but love and whatever, but <clears throat> it kind of makes you think when you've been on the other side, do you compliment somebody on, on their thinness, their weight, their, you know, I mean, it's kind of one thing to say, you know, oh, your hair looks awesome today, or, you know, you really did your makeup beautifully. My eyelashes are crazy. Um, <laughs> you know, that outfit is, is stunning on you or, you know, I don't think there's too many ways that you can screw that up, but I think it's really difficult and can be very awkward um, to comment on somebody's f physique. That was really hard to say. Sorry, words are hard. Um, yeah. I don't know. I was, I was watching that vlog this morning and, and, and that really that really touched me. That really I, I felt that in my soul. And bless him for speaking of that because, you know, I mean, he, he has a pretty big platform and, you know, that's a really vulnerable, personal thing to, to talk about, you know, uh, because people do, I mean, you, you know, you say, you know, oh, I'm, I'm going to start doing this. Or even if you say, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to try this, we're going to give it a go see how it goes not promising anything but we're gonna give it a go this is how I feel and this is what I want to try and we're gonna see how it goes and whether it's online or, or you're talking to close friends or close family he's absolutely right you know you you fall off it or you feel like it's not for you and and so you stop what you're doing and maybe start looking into something else and whatever. And it's, it's me. Oh, well, you, you, you know, quitter, blah, 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 blah. You know. So, you know, people are really quick, I think, to, to jump on, on stuff like that. And any kind of health, like not even speaking weight, like fuck weight. Okay. Any kind of health journey whatever that means to you is highly, highly personal, right? And depends on so much, right? It depends on your metabolism. It depends on your lifestyle, It dep which also factors in a whole buttload of other things, right? It depends on, I don't know, willpower. It depends on, it depends on a lot of things. And a lot of these things are, are very, 
different and personal from person to person, right? So when people try to give advice and say, you know, this worked for me, that worked for me, this didn't work for me, whatever. I mean, like I said, and it's all usually done with nothing but love and, and wanting to help and wanting to guide and trying to inform and whatever, but, and we're all guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. I've done it. Like everybody's done it. Everybody's done it, right? I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. I'm not saying that I'm holier than thou, like not, not at all, not at all. We all want to help and, and we all think that, you know, we're just trying to help. But then when we're on the other end and we're the ones that are, you know, thinking aloud or thinking online or whatever, and we get the same feedback, we realize, you know, damn, that, that can be hurtful. That can, you know, it can uh, hold you back. It can, there's a word I'm looking for and I'm not finding it. <laughs> but you know what I mean, right? Like, I think, I think most people that, that comment and, and that sort of thing try to, you know, whatever it, it, it is truly meant with love and respect and are just having a dialogue, right? But you just never know how that affects people. It's, it's such a personal thing. I think even people that are confident in their decision. And I, and I think in the beginning, you're not, a lot of people aren't really confident in their decision and they're not confident that they can do it. And I think that there's a lot of, you know, there can be a lot of self self doubt when starting any lifestyle change, right? And that's really what it is. It's, it's, it's not like, you know, you're going to do a couple of things, you know, change, you know, become a vegetarian or do keto or, you know, go for a couple of walks a night, whatever. Um, it, it's an entire lifestyle change, right? It's like, it's like quitting smoking. You, you don't just stop smoking because there are triggers, right? I mean, I've, I've been quitting <laughs> for, I don't know, six or seven years. <laughs> and the one thing that I have found is that you don't just stop doing what you're doing you have to change everything. Like I am also a huge coffee lover and I will never give up my coffee. I don't care. Um, but that is one of the biggest things that makes it hard for me personally to quit smoking is because, you know, I get up in the morning and I have a coffee and while I'm sitting out on my porch, rain, snow, hurricane, raging fires, I don't care. I'm out on that porch every morning having a coffee and with that coffee, there is a cigarette. End of the story. I cannot start my day. I cannot get out of that morning fog <laughs> without my morning coffee and cigarette. Now the coffee continues throughout the day and I don't give a damn what any doctor says. That coffee is free flowing all damn day long and I drink that pretty much until I go to bed. I, I do not care. I love me my coffee. My caffeine is life. It keeps me out of jail. Okay. Having said that, I also realize that if I don't give that up, my chances of quitting smoking are slim to none because coffee is, is a trigger for me to go have a smoke. So it is a big meal. Right? Not like my regular at home 
thing. But if I go like out to a nice dinner or if I go to a cookout with friends or whatever, a big meal like that and then the social gathering to boot, gotta have a smoke after a good meal. You know, helps the digestion as they say. <laughs> But that's facts, right? I mean, am I willing to give up my coffee, especially the morning coffee, so that I quit smoking? Not at this point. And considering that my mother went through her stage four throat cancer and subsequently passed away last August because of it. I mean, she'd beaten it and she was six years clear or whatever, but they put that down as the cause of death because Lord knows they can't put down it was the treatment. But, you know, after watching her go through all that, and I mean, it was atrocious. It, it, it was just heartbreaking, heartbreaking. Um, I, I, I never put the pack down. I never, you know, I continued smoking. Now I stopped smoking around her. I did not smoke around my mother. Um, for quite some time actually she was the one who insisted you know don't don't leave the room you know go ahead and have your cigarette and I said well you know I quit smoking in my house as as soon as she well she didn't even need a diagnosis I mean the, the tumor was actually visible I told her that this is what's going on you need to go get that checked um, but as soon as I'd seen that I stopped smoking in my house entirely and I don't smoke in my car you know but she would be outside like she would come over and she would bring coffee and we would sit out on my porch or out on my back patio which here let's see if I can switch this over my back patio there I gotta get that cleaned up and there's where my pool's gonna be <laughs> anyway we would sit there or on the front porch and have a coffee and I would get up and I would go down on the grass in front of the porch. I would like entirely leave the porch. I would check the wind direction, make sure nothing was blowing at her. Like it was a whole thing. I was super, super, super conscious of it. And, you know, she would say, you know, Jesus Christ, don't be stupid. Like have a cigarette. You're outside. Like, you know, like, nope. I, I never smoked directly around her, even outside, if we were out, you know, walking through the park or whatever. Um, you know, checking the wind direction and <laughs> it was like super, super conscious about it. But you know, and that has since stuck. Like I, I still don't smoke in my house. I still don't smoke in my car. Um, my kids just don't need to be around it, right? And I'm pretty sure that even once they're grown and out on their own and not in my car so much, um, I won't smoke in my car, I won't smoke in my house. And, and that's because that too has become a habit, right? So... I mean, that was a really no-brainer for me to not do it in the house and the car and all that kind of stuff, you know, because I wanted my mom to come over and I wanted her comfortable and I wanted her safe and all that kind of stuff. And I kind of thought the same for my kids, you know, like, how selfish is this? This is my habit, not theirs, you know. Um, but it, it was... It was you know, it was a big change. And when you make big changes in your life, it, I, I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't think you can force change, right? Because then I don't think it's a change you're going to stick to, right? The change I made about smoking in the house and smoking in the car was, I guess, in a sense of forced change, but 
again, not so much because what what's the big deal? I mean, if it means I can have my mom over for dinner or for a visit, you know, or that she can be in my car so I can take her to appointments and what have you, is 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 that because I'm being forced to do it or because I love my mom, right? Whereas you know, changing things to eat healthy, to be more active, to that sort of thing. You have to be ready for, right? You have to be ready to do it. You have to sort of pre-plan for it and and wrap your brain around, around it. And I have nothing for respect for people who, who, who you know get their shit together and do it. I, I think that's awesome. But I don't poo-poo anybody who, who speaks of it and then doesn't do it right away or doesn't do it the way that I would do it. Or, you know, I... For me personally, I mean, I did, I did workouts for years. Years, probably four years, almost five, with a personal trainer and, and all that kind of jazz. And then when I couldn't, uh, and I did the gym too, but I hated the gym, too many people. And they all want to talk, like I don't, I don't want to talk. Pay too much money to come here to talk. <laughs> um, but when I couldn't do that anymore, I'd gone out and I just bought, you know, some weights and my my trainer at the time actually sold me a, a, a bench it's kind of like a mini bow flex deal um and I so I made myself a little home gym in my basement um and I did that for a long time and then uh I guess about three years ago I stopped Things just got really busy and life gets in the way, right? And then, and then you beat yourself up about it, right? It's like, oh, I was doing so well and blah, blah, blah. And Although I have to say, I personally didn't see any changes physically in, in myself. Um, but I kind of have issues as far as, as that shit goes. So I, I don't really trust what I see, if that makes sense. Um, because I've never been happy with my physical, with my physique, right? Whether I'm skinny or whether I'm bigger, all kind of looks the same to me. I feel like I'm always the same, but I mean, you, you can tell through your clothes and whatever that you're not, but you know. And then with this whole pandemic crap, of course, you know, gyms are shut down and um, whatever. I went out late winter, very early spring, and got my hands on a used Bowflex that I got for a really decent price. And then God damn it, I got it home and it doesn't fit in my freaking basement. <laughs> My basement is, is, I'm just under 5'3". So if you're 5'3", maybe 5'4", or taller, you're going to be very uncomfortable in my basement. But my youngest dad, when he was living with me, I swear to God he had a Bofex. And it was down in my basement. So I don't know what the frig happened. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if his was adjustable or if his was a smaller version. I have no idea. But I was, I was pissed. <laughs> so now I'm waiting for my eldest to move out so that my youngest can take his room and I can make my youngest room my workout room. <laughs> but in the meantime... What I've personally started doing, and I make my youngest come with me at least once, is I go for a walk, two walks a day. 
my youngest has to come with me to one, whether it's in the afternoon or in the evening, I don't care. But he's coming on one of them. And it's a minimum of 45 minutes. Now, like I said, we're, we've got to be in the 30s today. We have to be. I'm sitting in this car with my cooler on and I'm dying. Um, so I'm not sure if, if I could go that long, 45 minutes to an hour in this heat. But we do the best we can and I bring Gatorade and water and whatever. And I stretch. I do these stretches um, before I go to bed, like literally while I'm lying in bed. Um, and my, for me, my stretches target my core and my hips and my legs because those are the areas for me that I hate. I hate, loathe, and despise always. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I would love to get a hold of a dietitian because my diet, my eating habits are garbage, uh, in the sense that, I mean, I don't eat a lot of garbage. I don't think I don't, I'm not a nutritionist, but I don't eat meals, right? Like, I eat dinner, usually. But that's my only, like, meal. And for me, because I'm... I'm not really a vegetarian because... Like, I eat eggs, I eat cheese, I eat fish. I love fish. Um, but I can't properly process any kind of red meat. Um, and after I had my second son, I realized I couldn't process chicken and stuff anymore either. Um, it just causes me intense pain and I can't, I can't dookie for like a week, week and a half. It's not a happy feeling and it's not worth it to eat some fucking chicken. Although I love me bacon and I do eat me some of that once a year, like at Christmas time for breakfast on Christmas morning. You betcha, she eats some bacon. And then she suffers for days. <laughs> but I would love to get a hold of a nutritionist and work out some proper some proper foods because I generally graze throughout the day, right? raw vegetables, fruit, nuts, I love cheese, eggs, stuff like that. Um, and then at night, like for dinner, like I make the boys chicken or burgers or roast or whatever, you know. And then the sides, right? Vegetables, potatoes, rice, noodles whatever and I tend to eat the sides so the vegetables the rice the potatoes the noodles whatever right and that's it so I would love to do something about that I think that along with just going for a, a good couple of walks a day would make me happy And then once, like I said, my oldest moves out, the youngest can go to his room and then I can have my workout room with my Bowflex up in what would then be like the spare bedroom, right? Because I love me working on a Bowflex. My personal trainer had a Bowflex and it's just so much easier on the joints and it's a smoother motion and I really, really liked the resistance training on the Bowflex as opposed to weightlifting. I don't mind weightlifting, but I prefer the resistance training. <sighs> but yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to make a video and I 
just wanted to basically thank Peter Mon. Thank you, Peter Mon. You are amazing. And I think I kind of love you. <laughs> I find you extremely inspirational and uplifting. And I think you are a beautiful human being. And I just wanted to sing you some praises today, I guess. We're feeling crazy. <laughs> I'm so stupid. <laughs> I'm so cringy. I'm sorry. <laughs> but he did make me feel really good today. And I just want, I thought, you know what? If he can be brave and, and share something so personal, maybe I'll do the same and thank him for it. The beautiful human being that he is. Anyways, I'm going to go in and clean my house and get ready for the long weekend. I'm going to put my pool up tomorrow morning and get some of the kids to help me clean off my patio there. Oh, oh there's a squirrel on my... Can you see him? That's my friend. Peter, do you see the squirrel? <laughs> Oh, he's behind the blow. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> he comes up on my porch in the morning and we talk. Anyway. <laughs> uh, I need to get the kids over to help me clean off the patio and clean off the, the chairs, the tables, and get all them out and stuff. So, yeah. It'll be a wicked hot and hopefully productive weekend anyways I'm gonna go my hands are starting to hurt holding this phone Something scared me sorry <laughs> um, so yeah everybody be well and you know to the two or three people that are watching have a great weekend stay hydrated get your ACs out Get your fans out. It's going to be beautiful. And uh, be nice to yourself. <laughs>